Hi, my name is Tomek. I am a member of the technical services team at Oxford Nanobore Technologies. In this masterclass, I will cover the main chemistries available for library prep in nanopore sequencing, and we'll also discuss which one to choose based on your priorities. I will start with a short introduction to nanopore sequencing and then move on to the kits and available chemistries, further discussing targeted approaches. In the final part of this masterclass, I will cover the resources available that will help you find the protocols and best workflows available for your application. If you'd like to learn more about other aspects of the technology, such as how nanopore sequencing works or how to analyze your data, please refer to the relevant masterclasses. So let's start with reviewing the benefits of nanopore sequencing. As a quick refresher, if you would like to make the best use of the chemistries and kits that are available, it is really good to understand the advantages of nanopore sequencing. With nanopore sequencing, you get simple and rapid workflows, a portable technology at no capital cost, which essentially enables the analysis of anything by anyone, anywhere. You get real-time and on-demand sequencing, you get information-rich data. Not only there are long, there are long reads, but also high data volumes with high consensus accuracy and uh, additional information about modified bases because we sequence the DNA and RNA molecules directly. To enable this, our workflows are organized into three streamlined steps, the library preparation, real-time sequencing, and analysis. For each of them, we offer a variety of options to ensure that we can cater to the scope and scale of any of your projects. In this masterclass, I'm going to focus on sample preparation and discuss which kit might suit your application best. Uh, to learn more about uh, devices or data analysis, again, please refer to the relevant masterclasses. So let's have a look at the principle behind library preparation and the different options available when it comes to library preparation methods, and also discuss how they work. To recap, at the heart of our technology lies the nanopore. It is a biological structure that uh, can serve as a gateway across a membrane or between two systems. We have taken advantage of this biological structure and engineered it to create a platform where the nanopores are embedded in an electrically resistant membrane. During the sequencing, we apply voltage to create a flow of ions to create a current that runs through this electrically resistant membrane. As we pass DNA or RNA molecules through the nanopore, we create perturbations, specific perturbations in the current that can then be translated into nucleotides, DNA or RNA nucleotides. Um, Ultimately, in very simple terms, library preparation is converting your DNA or RNA sample into a format that is compatible with nanopore sequencing. And this means attaching sequencing adapters. The sequencing adapters include a motor protein, which you can see in the animation, that controls the movement of the DNA or RNA at a fixed speed. In the case of DNA, this speed is controlled at about 400 nucleotides per second, which ensures uh, the, the most optimal data and uh, its further translation into the sequences of nucleotides. And not only the sequencing adapter includes the motor protein, but also tethering molecules. And these tethering molecules bring the, DNAs, the DNA molecules into close proximity with the membrane and the nanopores to improve the sensitivity and improve data outputs. Now, which... Uh, if you would like to sequence your uh, DNA, then uh, we have different chemistries available for, for, the for DNA sequencing. Uh, there are two main chemistries. There is the ligation-based approach and the rapid approach, or also known as transposase-based approach. The ligation approach is optimized for maximum throughput, while the rapid chemistry is developed for minimal preparation time. And also recently, we further optimize it for producing ultra-long reads. So let's have a look at these chemistries in more detail. Starting with the ligation sequencing kit, optimized for high data output, 
it was the first sequencing kit that we released and it's still uh, the most versatile kit. While it is optimized to deliver the highest outputs, it's still fairly simple and straightforward. It includes two enzymatic steps. Uh, the first one is the end prep, where we tag the DNA ends with 5' phosphate and 3' adenine overhangs, which prepares the DNA for the second enzymatic step, where we ligate the sequencing adapters. Now, these sequencing adapters include the motor protein, the tethers, and with the sequencing adapters, the DNA library is ready to be loaded on the flow cell. For a single sample preparation, this whole process takes about 60 minutes. The kit, as I mentioned, it's very versatile. It can take a range of input samples. It can take genomic DNA, whether it's fragmented or unfragmented, cDNA, amplicons. They can also be used as templates for the protocol. Uh, you have a control of fragment lengths by introducing optional fragmentation or size selection. The ligation kit is also compatible with uh, barcoding, whether introduced through PCR or in a PCR-free manner. Now let's have a look at the rapid chemistry. Uh, the rapid kit is really optimized for simplicity and speed. In this case, the library preparation is transposase-based. It involves fragmentation of the DNA through a transposase complex that uh, not only cleaves the DNA, but also tags the fragmented DNA with specific adapters. Now, these adapters include rapid attachment chemistry that uh, can then be used in an enzyme-free addition and attachment of the sequencing adapters. So after these two steps, the DNA again is ready to be loaded onto the flow cell and uh, for the sequencing. This protocol is also compatible with barcoding. The barcodes can be introduced at the transposition step, so there is no extra step required for multiplexing up to 96 samples in a single library. Uh, just to mention, this protocol works best with high molecular weight genomic DNA uh, with uh, average fragment length of at least 30 kilobases to ensure that your fragmented DNA still gives you long reads. Now, within the same rapid chemistry, we have taken advantage of the transposase to generate high-quality ultra-long reads with our ultra-long DNA sequencing kit. Um, we enable this by starting with higher amounts of ultra-high molecular weight genomic DNA, and uh, by using more DNA, we introduce fewer transposase cuts per molecule, increasing the fragment length. Uh, so with this kit, you can robustly, routinely generate N50 of about uh, 50 KB with still maintaining 10 to 20 gigabases outputs from a minion flow cell. Um, so the whole protocol uh, overview is presented here in the slide, where you start with the extraction of your ultra high molecular weight genomic DNA. And then uh, you, for this, we actually recommend an NEB Monarch kit. Then you put it through a rapid chemistry workflow, uh, the standard augmentation and adaptation to generate ultra long reads. Uh, we recommend loading such libraries three times per flow cell to enable optimal output, and we recommend washing the flow cell three times between each between each reload with the flow cell wash kit uh, to maximize the sequencing outputs. Uh, with these ultra long reads, you can generate highly contiguous assemblies, resolving gaps or uh, longer repeat uh, elements, centromeres and to also improve the phasing capability to map any variant, any small variants uh, or longer structural variants. So now that we have covered our uh, DNA sequencing chemistry, let's have a look at options for RNA sequencing. Um, given the nature of the platform, we can. it doesn't really matter whether we pass the DNA or an RNA analyte. So we can similarly just analyze RNA, sequence, uh, RNA molecule and its sequence directly. And then uh, this is uh, quite a unique approach. Uh, we, um, this is uh, quite unique to the Nanopore platform that we can actually analyze the RNA without the need for a cDNA intermediate. But we also have cDNA approaches with or without PCR uh, to generate larger amounts of data and that can allow mult also multiplexing and uh, address low input situations. With either of the approaches, 
you get entire transcript sequence, you get information about different isoforms, and the transcriptomic analysis is also straightforward because you can just count the, the transcripts rather than having to normalize for their length. Uh, which kit should you go for? Well, it depends on the priorities of your project. If you want highest throughput, then definitely PCR Sydney sequencing kit will be the best. If you want to avoid the PCR bias, but still want intermediate amounts of throughput, then direct cDNA kit will be best. But for detecting any changes in the RNA sequence on structure, such as modified bases, methylation, then direct RNA will be your best choice. And uh, now, so let's take a closer look at the direct RNA approach. The, uh, this approach enables uh, to gain access to information such as base modifications, and this is the main reason why you would want to use the direct RNA sequencing kit. The prep is uh, fairly straightforward. It takes less than two hours and requires 50 nanograms of polyadenylate template. In the first step, we anneal a specific reverse transcription adapter that is then followed by reverse transcription. This is optional. It can re uh, resolve any secondary structures in the RNA template, and, and we find it actually improves the read count by about 30%. Um, but uh, what is important to remember is that this cDNA complementary strand is never sequenced. We only sequence the direct RNA strand uh, from the 3' end to the 5' end. As you can see, the adapter attached in the final step of the library. And to uh, the adapter that we use for direct RNA sequencing is slightly different. The motor protein processes the RNA at about 100 bases per second, which compared to 400 bases per second with DNA, limits the output about four times. On the other hand, with the PCR cDNA kit, we have pretty much no limitations on the number of reads. Uh, we can obtain over 20 million reads with the minion or, or grid ion flow cells and more than 160 million reads from Promethion flow cells. Um, it does offer also quite a lot of flexibility. We can start with either 4 nanograms of polyadenylate RNA or 200 nanograms of total RNA, because during the protocol we actually select for polyadenylated transcripts. Uh, as you can see in the overview of the protocol, we first, again, just like with direct RNA, start with a reverse transcription adapter ligation, to select for full-length transcripts with the poly-A tail. Then we perform the reverse transcription, generate cDNA, and then amplify the double-stranded cDNA with uh, specific primers that include rapid attachment chemistry. So then we can, in the final step, attach the sequencing adapters in enzyme-free manner, just like we would do with our rapid chemistries. This kit is compatible with multiplexing to pull, to pull up to 24 samples in a single library. And uh, there's, it's also compatible with targeted approaches if instead of uh, sequencing the whole polyadenylated transcriptome, you would, if you're interested in specific transcripts, you can either reverse transcribe everything and then use selective primers or use bespoke reverse transcription adapter and then universal primers to already enrich only for your specific molecules of interest. So this brings us quite nicely to targeted approaches. When we're just talking about targeted cDNA sequencing, we have some further targeting approaches that I will now discuss in the following slides. One of them is 16S barcoding for pooling of up to 24 samples per flow cell. With Nanopore, we offer an end-to-end -end workflow, uh, starting from our quick 16S library prep kit to real-time analysis with Epitome software. It is actually quicker and uh, more cost-effective and more accurate than traditional culture-based methods. Uh, we offer the amplification of the full 16S gene. You can start with as little as 10 nanograms of input, and you can detect bacteria within complex background, even at low abundance, through the incorporation of the PCR. If you are looking for a PCR-free enrichment method, for example, if you still want to study base modifications such as methylation, then the Cas9 kit would be an excellent choice. It allows you to generate a high coverage of a particular region of interest. Uh, you can still get long reads up to um, 100 kilobases and beyond. And you can design your own probes to target and excise your region of interest or multiple regions of interest. 
and we use a, sp a specific dysphosphorylation step to block adapter ligation to non-targeted DNA. So in this way, you only sequence the DNA sequences that you're interested, you have targeted with Cas9. This makes essentially it more cost effective and you spend more time sequencing your region of interest. It's a fairly straightforward protocol. Uh, you can sequence up to 100 targets in a single library with very high coverage. Uh, you can in particular target uh, genes that are highly repetitive, evaluate the number of repeats, um, or sequence long gene targets in a single pass that wouldn't be accessible to long-range PCR. And then finally, adaptive sampling is a targeted sequencing method that does not require any additional library preparation steps. It's a software-based solution to a targeted approach. It's, uh, it's fast, it's flexible. In this way, you can enrich regions of interest on the software level. You can deplete off-target regions. And also, we are hoping in future releases, it will enable balancing coverage. And this is available through real-time analysis of the sequenced molecules. Uh, we can analyze the molecules while they're passing through nanopores and then eject them from the nanopores, which means that we increase the time spent on sequencing our loci of interest and making data collection more efficient. Finally, I would like to highlight online resources that will further support your kit choice decisions. Within the documentation section, you can navigate to the library preparation protocols and also utilize the protocol builder to provide you with a customized workflow for any experiment of your choice. And once you have selected your strategy, uh, you might also want to consider or review other steps in your sample preparation, sample extraction. And so you can also look at different tabs, but I would also recommend reviewing the relevant masterclass sessions. Um, you can further browse the, the other pages. You can look at uh, uh, extraction protocols, DNA handling, also the uh, information about sequencing and analysis. You can also navigate to Nanopore know-how pages where you have a collection of useful tips, tricks, and notes to get the best results from every sequencing experiment. Finally, if you're in the position where you need further guidance, you can find more information in the form of videos, papers, posters, getting started guides, and even data sets in the resource center on our website. Uh, you can filter by areas of research and techniques to find the most relevant resources for your application. I hope that you have found the topics discussed helpful in providing you with options to consider, as well as tools and resources that can provide further guidance in finding the best nanopore sequencing kit for your projects.